Let me bless you all with the gospel today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let the words of the gospel penetrate our hearts today. Please be seated. When I was in the seminary, one of our professors at 4.30 in the morning every day, 4.30 a.m., would walk up and down the halls and... and ring the bell. Which is why I continue to ring the bell. He would ring the bell up and down the hall. And he would yell at the top of his lungs, Rise and shine, boys! Rise and shine! Rise and shine! I'm reminded of that every time I ring the bell. Rise and shine. That first Easter, I imagine God the Father as this seminary professor saying to his son Jesus, Rise and shine, my son. And Jesus rose. And his resurrection has given our life its meaning. As all of our suffering and sadness is embraced by our loving God. Jesus rose so that our brokenness doesn't win, but God does. The God who is in you, who made you, it is no coincidence that you find yourself here today. It's a God incident. God wanted you to be here. God has been after you forever. It is not we who find God, the Bible tells us, but it is God who finds us. It is not you who have chosen me, Jesus tells the apostles, but it is I who have chosen you. We are Catholics. We love our saints. We love Mary. Mary didn't go after God to become the mother of Jesus. God went after her. We love St. Joseph. He did not go after God to become Jesus' foster father. God went after him. We love St. Francis, the saint that Laura loves. He did not go after God. God went after him. If you know the story of St. Francis and St. Stephen for Roger, the first deacon of the church and the first martyr killed by St. Paul and others, as we read in the Acts of the Apostles, neither Stephen nor Paul went after Jesus, Jesus went after them, and the same Jesus has gone after the both of you and after each and every one of us. So much does God love you. So special are you. He rose so that it is no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you. So that in God, our fail failures do not win. 
God's strength that is in us wins. Death doesn't get the last word. God's love does. And that's why today we can say, Alleluia. You know, I am taken back to that bell. In the seminary, when I so often would crawl back under my blankets and say, oh, just 10 more minutes. And this was the one thing that always got me in trouble. I didn't get in trouble for other things in the seminary, but I was always called on the carpet when I was in the seminary for oversleeping and for being late for the very, very early morning prayers. I was always late. Somebody would have to come and find me because I loved to crawl under the blankets saying just 10 more minutes and it would turn into an hour and I'd be in so much trouble. All the trouble because I didn't want to rise and shine. I preferred the tomb of hiding under the blanket as it felt so good for that time being to be under there. And I didn't want to do the hard work of actually getting up, rising and shining <laughs> at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> rising and shining and living. How many of us do exactly that? We prefer the covers. We prefer hiding to rising and shining. Hiding in our shame rather than getting help for our problems. Like in today's day and age, people hiding in their shame and not getting help for their depression, their anxiety, or their suicidal thoughts. Hiding in shame rather than getting help for your marital issues. Hiding in shame rather than venturing out and dating and find, finding a partner for your life rather than remaining lonely and alone. Hiding in covers, under the covers, in your addiction rather than getting help. We prefer the tomb and its darkness as it seems to be way more comfortable than starting an exercise program or a diet program. In other words, changing your life. The tomb, the covers are way more comfortable. But God isn't calling you to a comfortable life. God is calling you to a holy life. And the word holy means different. God wants you to be different. The tomb is way more comfortable than taking the leap out of bed. Maybe calling your sibling that you have been estranged from or writing a letter to the person you wronged and seeking forgiveness, that takes a lot of effort. Rising and shining isn't easy business. It wasn't easy for Jesus. And if we follow in his, in his footsteps, it's not easy for us. So I want to ask all of us, and myself included this Easter, what is the tomb that we have crawled into. Roll away the stone of the tomb that we find ourselves in. What are the covers under which we are hiding? Is it the tomb of participating in all this political rhetoric 
that has divided our country, where people have taken sides and people are thriving on cable news shows that fill them with hate. Climb out of that. Stop watching that garbage. What tomb do you have to step out of? God the Father said to his son this Easter, rise and shine, and Jesus did it. He did it. And you are his body. It's not that, you know, Jesus is somewhere out there. Jesus is in you. You are his body. We are the body of Christ. The same thing that God, the father of Jesus, told his son. He's telling you and me, his body, to rise and shine. Because that same power of the resurrection to rise is in us. You too can rise and shine if you want to. The problem is that we so often don't want to. Because if we did, we would. You know, we want God to do things for us. Oh, I want, you know, this miracle, boom. Okay, but, you know, miracles take participation. The problem is that we don't want to participate. We have to participate in the making of the miracle. 1 Corinthians 3.9 says, we are God's co-workers. That means you need to work. In fact, uh, St. Paul says in the Bible, those who do not work shall not eat. In other words, you know, don't think you can be lazy and God's going to do it all for you. No, you need to do the work. We are God's field, Paul says in the letter to the Corinthians. But God won't take you by force. He's not a rapist. He invites you to rise and shine. Will you? You know what you need to do. So what covers do you need to pull off of your face to rise and shine this Easter? Do I want Christ to rise in me? Or do I prefer to stay dead? St. Paul in the letter to the Romans says, you who were baptized into Christ have also been baptized into his death. Into his death. So as to share in his resurrection. So that just like Jesus rose, you may rise and shine as well. Rise and shine. In other words, stop hiding behind the masks and rise and shine this Easter. Admit all the things that you need to take the mask off of in your life, the things that are killing you, keeping you in a tomb, and God will help you. If you take one step, God will take 10,000 steps for you. That first step is always the hardest, isn't it? I mean, this hasn't been easy for you, you know. It's always the hardest. God is calling us to life, but if we embrace the life God is calling us to, we have to get rid of the things that are killing us. that are keeping us in the tomb. Mm? We have to get rid of them.
let's not say what I used to say in the seminary. Oh, I just want to stay a little while longer. You know it's killing you and that you need to give it up. It's a decision, isn't it? People always ask me, you know, they say, Father, where is faith at? Is faith in the mind, in the heart? Where is faith at? You know what I say? Faith is in the ass. In your, yeah. It's a biblical word, you know. We heard that on Palm Sunday. Faith is in your behind. Because it's a decision. It's where you place yourself at, you know. You've decided to be here today and take this great leap today. It's a decision. The human being is a decision. I decide every day whether I will be depressed or not, whether I will be anxious or not, whether I'm going to listen to the political garbage rhetoric that divides our country. I decide whether I'm going to turn that on and listen to it and fill myself with it. I decide whether I'm going to think of all the things that bring me down. I decide. It's a decision. So decide today. It's Easter. Decide that you're going to rise and shine and live a positive life, not a negative life. Rid yourself of the negativity. I decide. I replace all the evil thoughts that bring me down. We prefer, as I like to think of, mud crawling to rising and shining. I want to end this reflection with you today with something that always comes to my mind when I think about mud crawling. I don't know if you know what mud crawling is, but mud crawling is when I was living still in Poland, and we had a lake in the neighboring town. We didn't have swimming pools or any places like that, you know, where you could go and swim. So we would go to the neighboring town and they had a lake. And there, there was this beach with a lot of mud. And going there, I couldn't swim. So I would just stay at the shore and move my arms there in the mud and take my head up as I would be moving my hands in the mud and once in a while I would say look grandma look I'm swimming no I wasn't swimming I was mud crawling in other words quit mud crawling in your life Jesus says to Peter when he was fishing with the other disciples all night and they didn't catch any fish. And Jesus says to Peter, launch out into the deep waters. Cast your net into the deep water, Peter, Jesus says. And Peter doesn't want to. He doesn't want to take the leap of faith because he says, I've been, I've been, fishing all night and we've caught nothing but Jesus says do it again in other words you know we failed in our life before you know like people come and they say I've been married already five times yeah so what you know just because you failed before doesn't mean you're a failure you're not a failure what happened to you you know things happen it's life just because you've failed before doesn't mean you're going to fail again. You, you fell, but in order to get up, you have to fall. So now, yeah, you've fallen, now get up. Jesus tells Peter what he wants to tell all of us. Launch out into the deep waters. Stop remaining in the mud. Stop mud crawling in your life. Push away from the shallow waters 
and cast your nets, cast your nets into the deep water. Do as Peter did, even though you two are doubting as Peter was doubtful. Peter says, but, but Lord, he says, I've been fishing all night. This won't work. But then Peter, as doubt-filled as he was, said that defining word. He said the defining phrase, which I always remember because I always think, you know, you, you risk nothing in life, you gain nothing. And I always think of the response of Peter. Peter says, nevertheless, nevertheless, at your word, at your word, we will cast our nets. And they did. And the catch of fish was tearing their nets. They couldn't keep up with the amount of fish they caught. So today, this Easter, if you want to rise and shine with Jesus, down with the nets and up will, will come the fish.